Hello and welcome to Kayak Fishing Works. This is my review of the Vibe Shearwater 125. After six months of use, it's the good, the bad, the ugly. We'll cover how it ships, on water video, problems, mods, rigging, and my final thoughts on if it was worth the money. So it ships in a bubble wrap and a felt wrap. Pretty good to keep it from getting scuffed up, but definitely check the hole for any possible forklift damage. I only had a small scratch on the bottom. The seat requires some assembly. Lifting handles will need to be installed. We'll have to attach the rudder. I removed some of the excess rudder line and hand steering will require threading rudder cords. For the rudder cords, I threaded through some 100 pound mono with the steering lines taped to it. Uh, made it a lot easier to, to get it through the, uh, the cable jackets. There's some videos on the Vibe site for steering control setup. You want to check for loose screws and check the three hole covers. Um, I'd recommend pulling the hole covers off, making sure that the gaskets are in place, um, and then reinserting them. There have been a few reports on social media of holes taking on water because either a hatch gasket was not used or there's a thin rubber gasket used versus a thicker foam gasket. Um, this was early on, so I'm sure Vibe is taking care of these things, but still it's a good thing to double check if you're getting one brand new. I haven't been getting any water inside the hole. But I do keep the rear uh, scupper plugs out, the ones that go behind the seat and inside the rear tank well. So keep those out. If I get any water that comes up over the, you know, onto the deck, everything drains out pretty quickly. So the Shearwater 125 weighs about 77 pounds without the drive and seat, so it's pretty light. I originally bought it because I was going to car top and um, I can get up on top of the SUV myself, no problems. I ordered the Shearwater with the X-Pod so I could use it with the Hobie 180 drive. The pod didn't arrive until about six weeks after I received the Shearwater. Though frustrated by this, it was also a good opportunity for me to paddle for a while, something I probably would have done otherwise. And I have to say, this kayak tracks really, really well. And especially being such a stable hole design, it paddles pretty easily. Uh, now, I still think the Seagos 130 glides a bit better, um, but the Shearwater is not far off. At some point, I'm actually going to do a comparison between the Seagos 130 and the Vibe Shearwater, so look for that. Stability-wise, this is great. I'm 5'11", 195 pounds, and no problem standing. Um, I can even stand on one leg, been able to walk in a complete circle on the deck. Um, the hole cuts through the water really well. Now, with bigger waves, wakes, you'll get water over the sides, but with the scuppers out, it drains fine, no issues there. For the horizontal rod storage, I find myself only using one side of the horizontal rod storage as I lay my net and secure my hog trough on the left side. I'll often lay two rods on the right side. I don't even strap them down anymore. Um, I have my fish finder over there, and the way I set the rods in place, I haven't had any issues with losing them into the water. So the rear-facing rod holders, um, they work pretty good. Actually, I don't use them all the time, but certainly if I'm going under like low bridges and I only have a few rods, I'll use them. I did rotate one out a little bit just so that it didn't interfere with um, how I have my, my crate set up and the rods that are in that. So rotating out was easy enough, but you do have to, you know, come up with some kind of thick foam gasket to put in there to seal it off just because the way it's, it's uh, recessed. Uh, the side loading tracks work well. It took a little getting used to it at first, but no big deal. I had to fully remove, then reinsert the bolt on some of the track mounted items that have short bolts. Not a big issue. I don't take them on and off. Wish the, the tracks extended closer back towards the seat. But bringing them back further would interfere with the horizontal rod storage for some folks, so I understand why they didn't do this. Um, but if you're not really using that area, you can also um, install some smaller little you know, gear tracks um, basically up on the standing perches. Probably the one thing I like the best about this boat is the seat. It's really comfortable, although I did add a kayak cushion to the back, which it makes it even even better. Um, I do leave it in the fully high position, which works fine for me. I've not had any stability issues, and it makes it easier to stand. The only thing I think is weak are the little, what they call them, a shrimp clip. So it's a little clips at the front that hold the front of the seat down. Um, in theory, I think they're a great idea, but the way they're applied, that leaves me a little bit underwhelmed. It makes getting the seat on and off super easy, but sometimes the clips will self-release. I did hear that tightening their retaining screw helps with this, but since I leave the seat in one position, I just reversed the 
way the, the shrimp clips attach, and it it works great now. They never come undone. Um, I can still get the seat on and off. It's a little bit more finicky to do it, but it's really not a big deal. And like I said, um, the only time I would do it would be off the water because I don't adjust it on the water anyways. One other thing about the seat, the seat straps would slip out of adjustment. So I replaced the plastic buckle with the cam buckle from a used pair of tie-down straps. And I also attached the longer section of the strap to the top of the seat. Uh, so this way the buckle doesn't rub on the back of your arm. The tray, I was a little skeptical of the tray at first. Uh, it was stiff to slide in and out, pulled off the tracks if it, you extended it too far, and the tray itself really, I mean, it feels pretty flimsy. But after rubbing some beeswax on the rails, it slides like butter or, well, something coated in beeswax. Uh, but it slides a lot easier now. And I attached some paracord to a hook, and I attached that hook over the rear seat rail. So now it extends out far, but it won't pull all the way out unless I want to undo that clip and then take it all the way off. I know the tray really feels flexible. Um, it's held up. It's been super durable. Um, the netting works well as long as you don't drop travel hooks on it. And it keeps things secure, especially when um, I'm traveling the boat or, or have the car topped. I'll leave that tray installed and just you know keep the netting uh, latched down and I haven't lost anything out of that. Uh, oh, also one thing I did do is I put some little silverware holders inside of it, just two, one at the front and one along the side. So it just helps with the organization a little bit. I can use, put used uh, lures, soft plastics up uh, in one of the little trays. And then in the other tray, I keep my scissors, a knife, um, you know, a couple other things that, uh, you know, tools that they use on the water. So for steering, so the handle and the foot steering, they work well, just not together. Uh, maybe when I receive the free flow foot braces, they'll prove to work better, you know, when both the hand steering and the, and the, and the foot steering is tied to, tied in together. We'll see when those arrive and I'll reevaluate it then. I basically just took the uh, foot braces off and I just use the hand steering now. Um, they're nice to have when you're, definitely when you're pedaling the kayak. Um, mainly I'm either using a trolling motor now or the pedals, so I haven't really needed them. Um, and just there's a lot there's a lot more resistance here when you're trying to use the hand steering when it's tied to the older style foot braces. So once again, I just took them off. But by itself, the hand steering I think works great. There's a couple of little modifications. So one is there's a little steering brake. There's an adhesive pad on it uh, that basically just kind of rides on the side of the hole. And that pad, after about a week, it just the adhesive comes loose and it's kind of useless. So. Uh, the other thing is you want to take the screw that actually holds the steering uh, handle in place and um, you, know, you take that out, put a like a stainless washer and it will keep the, the steering handle uh, from loosening up. Alright, what else about the steering? So the rudder doesn't deploy smoothly and I, it's undersized. I, I've made a modified rudder extension out of HTPE. Uh, this bolts onto the lower section of the rudder. And it vastly improves the steering. It adds weight, which allows the rudder to deploy easily. Also, I've modified how the steering cord is attached to the rudder itself. Um, there's a lot of different, if you look on you know, the Vive Shearwater Facebook owners group, there's a lot of different uh, mods on there, different ways to do it. Um, but basically, you'll want to do something so that you get the, uh, the rudder to turn a little bit sharper. Um, also, I know there's been some complaints, people saying, oh, the, the cords that it come, comes with the, the steering handle and, and the foot pegs that the cords stretch. And that's not the case. I'm pretty sure that that cord is made of like Dyneema, which doesn't stretch at all, um, but it's kind of slick. So I think what's happening to some people is um, however they have it attached to the rudder, it's that it, connection is slipping on them. So what I've got is uh, there's a bolt and two nuts and I wrap the cord around the bolt and then uh, basically jam those nuts down tight to each other. I haven't had any issues with um, you know losing tension on the steering cords. So something, something to think about, something to look at if you're having issues with yours. So the pods, the kind of the whole pod system which makes this a pretty unique uh, kayak in my opinion. Paddling pod, the pedaling pod, you know X-pod. So the, the idea is great. Um, the hold downs that hold the whatever pod you put in in place are pretty cheesy in my opinion. 
Um, you definitely will want to add a stainless steel washer to the three of them just to keep the bolt from, you know, possibly pulling out through the, the plastic hold down. As far as the paddle pod goes, not much to say there other than if you want a paddle, you'll want to use it, right? Um, it does its job. Um, as far as the VersaPod goes, it's really nice. Uh, it adds a lot of storage space. Um, so if you're going to be just paddling or motoring, you know, it's definitely something to think about. As far as the X-Pod goes, so if you're you know, trying to use the pedals, um, it's kind of a mixed bag in my opinion. I think the design is adequate, but the materials just aren't up to the task. I've had issues with two X-Pods now. Uh, granted, I'm using a Hobie drive, so maybe that has something to do with it. But the first X-Pod I had, it developed a crack where the front of the Mirage drive rests on it, and the X-Pod would end up filling with water. Uh, Vi warrantied this out really quickly. Um, they were really cool about it. But then that second X-Pod, within half an hour of you know, doing some heavy pedaling, the Mirage drive ended up just pitching forward and it broke two of the, two of the locks. Um, the drive wouldn't stay in place at, at that point. Also, the drive locks, they would often unlatch on their own, which caused one of the replacement <laughs> latches I received to, to break. Since then, I've made some modifications to the X-Pod. Uh, added a strip of aluminum to the front channel on the X-Pod, so it goes down and it uh, co covers the, the lip there. Uh, so now the, now the drive won't pitch forward anymore. Um, I think it also adds some support, so hopefully it won't crack down at the front section. The other thing is I made some little uh, toggles, so it keeps the drive latches in the closed position. So I've been using that for a little while now. Um, really have had no issues with it. Uh, it's actually been working fine uh, with the modifications. I still have no confidence in the latches, though. So I've ordered an alternative to the X-Pod. Um, I got it from Yak Gadget. It's made out of HTPE plastic and honest to goodness metal latches. So that's going to be arriving pretty soon. I wish it, I wish it didn't have the problems that it, it does. And for, I think for some people, they haven't had any issues, which that's great. But um, after going through a couple of these and seeing a lot of other people that have had issues, um, personally, I'm, I would just go ahead and get the Yak Gadget drive insert and go from there and then wait and see what wait and see what uh, what Vibe does and the next generation right of the Shearwater. So not specific to the Shearwater but the Mirage style drive really excels in grass and shallows and having come from a propeller style drive it's really nice to rarely have to remove the drive to clear from any weeds. I mean I was um, I was in like Gunnersville recently and you know it's that's chock full of hydrilla and milfoil and all sorts of weeds and um, I mean, it was great. I was able to go through a ton of that stuff and, you know, it just motored through it. So that was pretty fantastic. Also, if you get into really skinny water, um, just being able to flutter kick and have those, uh, you know, the, the flippers up close to the underside of the kayak, it's, you can get into some pretty skinny water and still, you know, move along pretty well. So that's super nice. Um, the electronics pod works great. I really like being able to have my transducer come with me when I pull the fish finder off the boat. So especially, you know, if you're, if you're trailering and have to park it somewhere overnight, things like that, it's nice to have, you know, your expensive electronics off there. Um, I have a side imaging unit. I haven't had any issues, you know, with damage to it. And I've got good returns on it. Um, also, I came up with a different solution for all the transducer cable and, that and how to contain all that. So none of the cabling goes into the box itself. Um, and so it's nice because I've got all that dry storage that's right there up front. So if you take the shear water out without the electronics pod in place, you'll need to fill the hole. Otherwise, you're basically going to have water sloshing up from the opening. So I just stuff either a large Gatorade bottle or a extra thick pool noodle into this opening. Customer service told me at some point there will be the ability to order an additional pod. So I'm definitely going to get one of those because it would be nice um, times when I don't want to use the electronics. Just to have that, you know, a pod I can electronics pod I can drop in. I don't even use it for electronics, but you know, I still have my storage um, that I can use it for.
As far as tackle storage goes, the side tackle pockets are cool. Um, I really like having them there, and I just wish that they did a better job of draining water. Um, and I think my hole's probably a little bit, you know, and maybe a little bit warped because um, it does retain some water in the side pockets. So even though my waterproof tackle boxes say they're waterproof, it's not all the time. So it's kind of a little bit of a, it's kind of a little bit of a pain, uh, you know, if it's a rainy day or or I've you know, taken a lot of some water into the boat. Um, but uh, the solution there is you can put some like three quarter inch foam down and you know it'll keep it up high enough to keep it out of any water that might stand in there. Also it keeps it a little bit quieter when you're pulling your boxes in and out. Not having internal storage. So I was a little skeptical of how this was going to work out. It'd be nice to be able to throw you know like a jacket, rain pants and a hat so it's not such a big deal just to stuff it in a dry bag or into my waterproof crate. Honestly, it's you know it really hasn't been a big deal except it's a little more hassle getting getting the battery in and out because I do uh, store the battery up inside the front hatch. So standing on the sheer water is really easy, um, but when I'm using the pedal drives, I have the seat pushed all the way to the rear position. When I stand up, my feet aren't on the nice cushion surface, but they're actually on the plastic of the kayak, and then they're all also the seat rails that are right there. So not real comfortable if you've got bare feet. So what I might do is just add some more uh, deck cushioning right into that area. So issues I've had so far. Um, X-Pod woes, as I previously stated. Uh, the paddling pod that I received with the shear water, it was warped on the top. And the rudder didn't deploy unless you push out with a paddle. Not a big deal, but kind of a pain if you have uh, rods in the way. So I made a warranty, warranty claim on these two things. And Vibe quickly sent me out a new rudder. Um, and at my request for, you know, I asked for a discount on a Versapod. They just went ahead and just sent me a Versapod, you know, free and clear. So that was, that was pretty cool of them. Um, yeah, I had to wait a long time for my pre-ordered boat. But the warranty claim service, you know, it's been outstanding. Unfortunately, you know, I think I've had to use it more than I would have liked to. But on the other hand, it's also, you know, I'm giving a little bit of slack here. It's a, it's a new boat. It was a new design. And they were dealing with a lot of, um, you know, the whole COVID issue broke right when this stuff got released. So um, I know things got a little complicated. People might look at them as big issues. To me, it's just kind of, well, I've, I have had to do some modifications. And uh, I kind of enjoy some of it. Um, you know, doing the mods though, to, the, to the X-Pod, I, I wasn't happy about that. Um, you know, doing some odds to, to the rudder, it's like, well, there's, it's not the only boat that, you know, benefits from, from modifying the rudder. Other issues, I guess, would be um, you do get some no, notable hole slap at times. Um, even in fairly light wind with ripples, I don't know if it really affects uh, the fish or not. Um, you know, it, it would be nice if it, it wasn't there, but um, I'm kind of warming up to the fact that maybe it's not as... Uh, it's not affecting the fishing as much so so here's some rigging I've done on it and things I've added so added an anchor wizard um, some of the best money I've ever spent I attached it on the side and removed uh, you know the side handle and attached it over there I've used one screw that goes into you know pre-existing um, basically nut that's a, that was for the handle and the other two attachment points that I use they're just screws that go right to the hole so anyhow uh, but I also added a you know a couple pulleys they, they don't turn anymore but it still allows for the anchor cord to you know run a little bit freer um, so this is the setup I have on it so it works well it's easy to get to but also since I land fish on the left hand side too it kind of keeps it away from that side um, the one thing I can do with this as well is I can actually take the you know, whatever anchor I'm using at that time. So sometimes I'll use a little downrigger ball. Sometimes, a lot of times I'll just use a dumbbell, which is great because they're super cheap. They're, uh, you know, rubber coated. So when you retrieve them, they don't bang up, you know, really loud against the hole. I don't use any kind of clip to attach the, uh, to the anchor. Um, I just basically use a, a bow line and then loop the line through it. So if I disconnect it, there's a day I want to actually use the anchor off the back end. Um, depending on you know which way the wind's coming in, um, I can just easily route the cord 
through the back hole on the anchor wizard. I run around a little pulley back there, and anyhow, it makes it pretty versatile. Stakeout pole. So I've got have a homemade stakeout pole. I've actually have a video on this if you're interested in how to make it. Um, you know, you can make this thing for well. The pole is going to be more expensive, but the the mechanism itself, you know, for other twenty bucks, you can make it and then um, attach. If you already have a stakeout pole, you may be able to work with that. Occasionally, I'll use a trolling motor. You know, keep things simple. Um, the trolling motor doesn't turn anything like that. I'm not using it to fish with, honestly. I'm just using it if I'm trying to cover long distances. And so it's just in a fixed position. Um, and then if I want to retract it, I've got this cord. I can just pull it up and the, the jam cleat holds it in place. And then it releases really easily. Um, the nice thing about it too is if you do run it over a stump or something like that, it's just gonna, the trolling motor is just gonna kick up. I modify the clips for the uh, for the rod hold down so um, and this might be something you guys want to do it makes it just a little bit easier in my opinion to get um, you know get that little bungee cord connected and disconnected maybe one of the most important questions is can you catch fish on it and yeah so I was able to catch my biggest bass this year on the sheer water it was a nine and a quarter pound large mouth so that was pretty cool um, I just missed the cut for the top 100 at the KBF National Championships in Gunnerville. I actually had the fish at the side of the boat that would have put me into the top 100, but lost it, so it happens. Um, I still think about it, though. Um, but the, the fault wasn't with the sheer water, um, and I ended up 115th out of 300, so, um, Holy cow. so that, was, that was cool. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, I think it's a, it's a very fishable boat, and I've, um, other than having the, the drive issues, which happened twice during tournaments. Um, I've really enjoyed actually fishing out of it. Um, I think it's it's been working out well. So, so here's kind of my breakdown of uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. So the good, um, it's definitely it's a stable boat um, for sure. Uh, standing up in it's super easy. I never had issues even with uh, you know in big waves and winds. You know feeling um, feeling uncomfortable like I'm going to get you know going to turtle it, but. Um, it's also pretty quick. Uh, it cuts through the water and waves, so I no longer am getting drenched like on my other pedal drive, um, which is kind of nice. I mean, you definitely will get water over, over the sides, you know, like I said, heavy winds and waves, but uh, but just cutting through them, though, um, it does pretty well. Um, it's a good-looking kayak, what can I say? Um, uh, the seat, it's really comfortable. I think it's one of my most favorite parts of the kayak. Um, vibe customer service. Uh, they've been great. And the horizontal rod storage, um, I really like that. I, I don't use it, you know, like I thought I was going to do originally um, or to the extent that I was thinking I was going to use it. But um, it's definitely nice to have the length of the boat there that you can lay your rods down and tips are protected. Um, so I, I think it works, you know, for what it is, it works, it works well. Uh, it's got a good size tank well. Um, Electronics pod, I really like that, uh, and it paddles and it tracks really well, um, and I really like the tackle tray. So, in fact, I like the tackle tray better than I thought I would. The handles are great, um, especially the recessed handles in the back and the one at the very rear of the kayak, so um, it, that was really well thought out. So, as far as the bad goes, um, yeah, the steering brake, uh, yeah, I mean, kind of, not, not the greatest. Um, and then the, the flimsy pod holder, the you know, hold down latches, um, like I said that I think they're a little, a little cheap, um, but they're, they're holding the pods in place, so I guess they're doing the job. Um, the shrimp clips for the seat, I wish they worked a little bit better, um, you know, that I didn't have to reverse them, but I mean, they're, the way I've got it set up, it's working fine for me. Uh, the rudder, um, you know, definitely, Definitely should be modded to get better turning. Um, I mean, it works It works okay the way it is, but if you want to get better turning, you can definitely do some mods to it um, to, to improve that. And then as far as, you know, another bad, I don't, I don't like the fact that I do get water that collects in the side tackle holders. I don't know, maybe on a future uh, version of it, maybe they could, you know, 
have it drain a little bit differently, something like that. But um, but I do like having the, the tackle holders here, though. I think they work out really well. And the ugly. So being through multiple X pods has not been great, you know, but there's an alternative to it. So, I mean, say certainly if you're using like a Hobie 180 drive with kick-up fins like I am, um, I would certainly get the Yak Gadget. And then also the fact that I'm still waiting on free flow braces. So that's been, you know, it's been a little disappointing. So, and then just some random thoughts. If you're deciding between, say, like a, a Hobie Compass and the Shearwater, um, I would definitely go with the Shearwater but only if getting the Yak Gadget drive insert and making some modifications to the rudder. Um, I really like the seat so much better on the sheer water than the Compass. You know, definitely a tougher decision would be, you know, between say an Outback and the sheer water. So even though the Outback has internal storage and definitely faster turning, I still like the sheer water seat better than it. I think it keeps you elevated a little bit higher, um, but there's a lot of nice things about that, uh, that Outback also. So. And it's nice having the internal storage. So in conclusion, was it worth the money? Yeah, I say definitely. Um, you know, with modifications of patience, it's been a really great kayak. I still enjoy using it. It's been, you know, it's definitely fit the bill for car topping. Um, it's replaced my other pedal drive to become, you know, my tournament kayak. But now that I have a trailer, I may move to a Hobie Pro Angler for tournaments. Um, I decided though if I if I get a pro angler I'll, I'll still keep the sheer water and I'll certainly sell my other pedal drive so so that's it guys um, you know if you have any questions comments please leave them down below you know, and please subscribe if you haven't I appreciate you watching this video hopefully you got something out of it thanks later. Mm -hmm.